friends, it's Annie and I am back with most of my voice also having returned. Thank you guys so much for enjoying my silent flip video that I uploaded last week when day passed after day passed and I did not get my voice back. That really is hard for a YouTuber, I might add. But it's inspired me to get a little bit ahead and schedule out some amazing content for you guys. So I'm really excited. Which means if you are not a subscriber and you just happen to stumble upon this video or you just kind of pop in now and then, can I encourage you to hit that subscribe button and that way you will always know when I post, what I post, and you'll be some of the first people to see what I have going on. All right, guys, finally, after the poll several weeks ago on my Instagram channel, second place came to chores in our planner. And you guys have been waiting. I promised that even though it was second place in the poll that I would be doing it in a video and that day is today. So let's jump right in for all of my tips, suggestions, and methods for getting all of the housework handled by using a planner. All right, before you can actually start kind of planning things in your day, you need to figure out what kind of planning, or excuse me, what kind of cleaning method is going to be best for you. And this is really gonna depend on your lifestyle and your schedule. For me, I find it best, because I'm a stay-at-home homeschooling mom, to do a little bit every day. Part of that is because we have people in our home every day making messes, therefore they need to be cleaned up every day. Um, you might be working outside of the home and only be able to clean on, say, Saturday mornings for an hour. That's okay. You just need to know where and when you're going to clean and how you're going to kind of accomplish it. The next thing, and this is where Pinterest is a huge inspiration, is to kind of get an exhaustive list of all of the things that you really need to start doing or continue doing in your home. Now, I have a completely separate notebook here in the back of my planner. This is a Designs by Planner Perfect blank journal, and I use it for my lists booklet. So I have a bunch of other kinds of lists in here, including my chore chart. Now I did label it home management, but I wanted to share real quick, I don't include in these lists things like change the oil in the car or I don't know, change the air filter, things that you might consider home management, um, but I don't really do those things. My husband does them and I really keep this fairly strictly cleaning and like chores. So everybody's gonna have their own style. You just need to know what works best for you. Use that inspiration from, say, Pinterest to find these lists and write down everything that you either need to do, need to continue doing, or constantly are forgetting. Therefore, it needs to be on a list in front of you so you can make sure that you have it and you know what to do. Now, I find it easiest to break my list up into daily, weekly, and then this is kind of like monthly. You could also have quarterly and even a yearly one. There are some things that we really just don't get to apart from once a year. You write them down as you see fit, break them up into categories. I find the trick is that there are some things that like I get so motivated. I'm like, oh, I should be doing these all the time, every week, every month. But really when rubber meets the road, that is way too much chores. I can't stay on top of it. I'm busy, you're busy. So some things really just don't need to be done as often unless they're truly like filthy. Windows might be an example. I have kids. You might have dogs or kids or both. Yeah, they get a little gross, but do you have to do them every single day or twice a week? Maybe you can get away with once a week or a couple times a month or once a month. And you know, just kind of let it slide a little bit. It really just depends on you depends on your situation. I'm just offering it up. If you're feeling overwhelmed and like you can't, like you're constantly cleaning and you can't get things done, possibly it's something that can last a little bit longer in between cleaning cycles. Um, the other thing that's really hard and unmotivating with chores is somehow, somewhere, we've gotten this idea that once we clean it, it's supposed to stay clean, right? Like once we've done the laundry, it's supposed to stay done for a day. Or once we clean the bathroom, it's supposed to be clean for the rest of the day. I don't know where we got that. I don't know why we got that, but I don't know about you, but I have people who live in my house. You know what I mean? Like cleaning is really just keeping it from getting worse. It's not a matter of it's going to stay a certain way, unless you have like a guest bedroom or a room that you rarely use or like a bathroom that almost never gets used. 
maybe then, you know, you clean it once a month for guests or something. But if it's a part of your house, like your kitchen or your living room, it is going to get messed up on a daily, sometimes hourly basis. And when we're cleaning, we're really just keeping the germs at bay and we're practicing putting things away so that we were not, you know, knee deep or hip deep in toys or books or clutter. So try to get that out of your mind and you can be even more motivated and less discouraged when you do have to clean something for the umpteenth time because it really has nothing to do with getting it clean so that it stays clean. It's really just maintenance. We're maintaining the bathroom. We're maintaining the kitchen. I'm cleaning up from one meal so I can be ready to make a mess with the next meal and so on. So if you have all of your chores, if you have all of the things to make your house run so that way you can cook, you can, you know, use the bathroom, you know, you have to have a system in place so that way you can actually find your bed at the end of the day and not have it cluttered with stuff or clothes that weren't folded or something and you have all those listed down, now it's time to take them and put them in your actual calendar. So I feel like depending on who you are, and how you plan, what kind of planner you have, you're going to put chores in your day in different ways. Now, one of the easiest ways, of course, is to simply write it in. So here we are, this is my planner. I use a standard size traveler's notebook, so I have all these individual little notebooks. And this one here is another blank journal, which I kind of set up bullet journal style with one day per page is my common um, way of setting up my pages. That way I can do this kind of to-do list or make some notes and I can even journal in the empty space, decorate with stickers, washi tape, or even put sticky notes that are both functional and beautiful to me in my spread. So one of the simplest things would be today is Thursday. Let me write down a few things that I want to get done and there you go. I can check them off. So and the only example I have of that so far this week is when I wrote down laundry on Monday. It's right here. I often write it down and I like to check it off. Why don't I write down more things? Well, Thankfully, I have kids. So even though I have a large family and a lot of people making messes throughout the day, that also means that I have helpers. So my oldest three are nine, seven, and four, and they're actually able to do many of these things to a certain degree. Some of them I have to help, some of them I just have to supervise. It really just depends on the task and the age of the child. Now, this is a huge thing. I hear so many women who are frustrated because nobody in their family pitches in and I'm not trying to tell you to do anything I'm just offering this up that if there are more than one person people using the bathroom there should be more than one person people cleaning the bathroom that's my two cents however you need to work that out in your family whether you need to have a family meeting whether you need to just offer you know no allowance no electronics or Wi-Fi until things happen whatever you need um, do what's best for your family and don't put so much burden on yourself delegate some of the stuff so that's one of the reasons that I don't have all of these or often have any of these things written in my planner. My kids have chore charts, they are on our fridge, and most of these tasks are delegated in very specific ways and specific chores that they have to do. For instance, my every other day, my seven-year-old and nine-year-old swap this. One of them cleans the toilets and one of them cleans the sink. And the next day, they swap. So they're both doing a bathroom chore and it's getting done what we need and it's not overtaxing them, but it's something they can do, and that's how it works. Now, I have done a completely separate video on our chore system and our chore charts. I'll try to remember to put it like in a card up above. Otherwise, I'll try to link it below and connect you with the content. I lost my train of thought for one second because I had to go deal with a kid, which is all okay now, but let me try to get my mind back. So I will link that video below or somewhere so you can see how I have set up our chore system. Now these chores that happen on like a weekly basis, it's more important for me to write these ones down and kind of assign them to myself because 
I forget about them because they're not as regular and they're also some of my least favorite jobs. So that's where it's a good idea to go back to your daily pages when you're setting it up. So it's Sunday night, you're getting ready for the new week and to look through your week, to look at your monthly calendar and think, huh, I'm busy these days. So these are the two days that I have free and I should probably assign myself one of those weekly chores because that means a little bit extra work that day. I should assign myself one of those weekly chores on either of these days and write it in. That way it's not forgotten and it's actually in the planner. Um, another other way is that you can put chores in your planner. Let me flip back to some past spreads is to do something like this. So this is where all of my calendar information is. I did a week on one page. This is like a note section. You can use habit trackers. You can make your own. You can use something similar to this. Whatever it is, um, there's so many options available no matter what kind of planner you have that you can do this in your planner, which is awesome. Because you can actually put things like tidy, dust, vacuum, mop. And here's another tip. One thing that I think many of us can struggle with when it comes to habit trackers is somehow in our mind, we have this idea that like, if we don't have a check mark every day, it's kind of stressful and we feel like we didn't do something we were supposed to. Mentally remember that like dusting, for instance, is on my weekly to-do list. So I only need to have one check mark this whole week and that's okay. And as long as I remember that, and as long as I have that mentality going in, I don't need to worry about it and have the anxiety from like unchecked things. Really, all I'm trying to track is how often I dusted. Did I do it this week? Wow, I actually did it twice that week. That's amazing. And you know what? Honestly, I probably haven't done it since then. That was like a month and a half ago. That's gross. Anyways, be okay with blank space if you're going to do a tracker like this because you're not going to fill some things in every single day and that should be okay. So that's another way to do plugging in your tasks from your chore list into your spread is with a habit tracker. Um, one of the last ways that I want to tell you about that I often do is I'll put it on a sticky note. I love pretty sticky notes. I love how they look on the page and as you're like flipping through, how they stick out, how they go with the theme, and it just makes it a little more fun. Plus, I find that for me personally, it's so much easier to take a sticky note and have seven or eight chores on it and put it on Monday. And on Monday, when I have that space in the afternoon where both babies are napping and we finished with our homeschool and I finished lunch, that kind of stuff, and I have a little bit of time, I like to look at that chore chart, do the things that I can, maybe it's one thing, maybe it's four things, and just check them off. And then come Tuesday, I can just travel this sticky note to the next day and I can do whatever I did not have time to get to. But maybe Tuesday's busy. And so I don't get to anything. And so I just simply migrate the sticky note to Wednesday where I can fit in as many things as I possibly can. And like that, that's usually how I work. And I just aim to get a certain amount of things done every single week and stay on top of them. And it usually doesn't matter if they're done on any specific day. If it does have to be done on a specific day, I'll often actually write it on that day. And that helps me remember that I really should do that on this day. So that is how I take my chores, the things that I need to do to run my house, to be able to make the next meal, to be able to crash into my bed at night, to be able to take a bath or shower and so on. And I get them in my planner and I use my planner to make it seamless, easy, no brainer to just kind of divvy things up and get things done. Honestly, I think the hardest part for chores for most of us is not that we don't know what to do or when to do it, is that we just simply don't. I am finding it so hard sometimes. I just have to tell myself to put down my book, to turn off the TV, to get up off my butt and actually do what needs to be done. And if I focus, here's another tip. There is a time and a place. I'm not knocking watching Netflix or binging on YouTube while you're folding laundry or doing different things. There's a totally acceptable. But I have been learning that I would rather crank it out, get the job done, and then actually sit and lounge and watch my show or read my book or whatever it is, enjoy the sunshine. And I get things done so much faster if I simply do the task. Focus on the task. 
I don't worry about a podcast. I don't worry about a video. I just do the thing and it takes me like a third of the time when I do it that way and that's my preferred method. But you do you, get those chores done. Hey, I would love to do a follow-up video to this sometime and what I would like to do is collect all of your tips, your suggestions, everything that you have done ever to make cleaning easier, to make chores easier, the tricks to actually put your stuff in your planner, your creative ways to write it down or see it. I would love to know it. So please drop me a comment and let me know. And then hop on over to Instagram and interact with me. I would love to talk to you more. I know that some of you guys don't have Instagram, but for those that do, I feel like I have built relationships with you guys that we have messaged back and forth, and I have just learned so much about you on Instagram. I do respond to every comment here on YouTube, but I just feel like it's a harder platform to actually build those relationships and get to know you as much as I would like to. So consider doing that. I am a wife and mother with an N instead of an and, and I will put it on the screen, and my link is always down below so you can find me super fast and easy. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope it helped you get out there, get your chores done, and you're actually going to watch my next video after you've done all your chores and in the satisfaction of knowing your house is clean. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.